every one of us, whether we know it or not, is coded with the emerging story. And that the newness in every one of us is that story evolving. And what we're really here to do when we tell the story of the past is break through to the new species that's awakening in us today, right here in you. That's our goal. So we're telling you an awesome story, and I am so proud and delighted to have this. It's more than accompaniment. When Bridget and I started to play with this, I would say something, and then she would play and expand on it. And then I would come back and say more based on what she did. So we're very much partners in the telling of the universal story. And we see that one day there will be huge concerts. This <laughs> whole story, so we're at the very beginning, you're with us, it's in all of us, and let us enjoy it together. Yep. So be it. So it is. We're going to start out with our most favorite expression, humanity arise. Say it, say it out loud and see how you feel when your arms stretch. Humanity, humanity arise. arise. That's what's going to happen today. So in order for you to get started with all of this, I want to tell you a love story, a cosmic love story, an evolutionary love story, and we're all starring in it. <laughs> Everyone is a star of this play, and we're going to open our evolutionary eyes together to see the part in the story that we're called to now. So to get started, just imagine the universe. Billions and billions of galaxies. Multitudes of smaller galaxies, each with trillions of stars. And then we focus just on a very, very local event our galaxy, and in it, our Earth, so tiny that the astronauts could hide it behind their thumbs. So we, when we're telling our story, we have to place ourselves in this magnificent Earth in a universe of untold dimensions and possibly filled with forms of life so far beyond what we have ever known. But what we do know is we're just about opening our collective eyes to find out. <laughs> That's exactly where we are. So in order to catch a glimpse of our story, it's very interesting to notice the story of creation that brought us here. So let's start at the beginning in the mind of God, in the mind of Source, in, in the infinite intelligence, in consciousness, in the mystery beyond all mysteries. What happened to begin the story, we can see it as a spiral. The formation of the universe, these billions, trillions of galaxies. The formation of our Earth. The formation of life on that Earth. Next turn in the spiral. The formation of multicellular life, plants, animals, the biosphere. The formation of human life, Australopithecus africanus, Afri uh, the Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Homo neanderthal, Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens. And do you think 
that the whole thing ends here with us? <laughs> Do you imagine we're the final version? And the universe said, now we really got it, there they are. This is it. <laughs> it's really interesting when you think of it that way. So as the first species to ever know that we're part of this vast story of creation, the first species to ever know we could render ourselves extinct or we could evolve ourselves, the first species to ever know we're waking up to evolution and that we are conscious of evolution. So just take a moment to see the awesome, amazing reality of this generation. We might not have noticed how important we are. We might not have realized that it's possible that those billions and billions of years are in the balance as to why our generation chooses to act, to why our generation chooses to create. And this means the purpose of this story is to see what's inside of you that could possibly rise to the occasion of being decisive in the story of evolution itself. Okay? Nobody has any idea how this came. If you ask a scientist how this happened, you'll say it came from no thing at all, which is to say everything that is in the Big Bang. The first two to three seconds of that Big Bang was so perfectly designed in energy and matter and motion that if it had been a little faster or a little slower, nothing could have happened. In other words, there is a perfection at the very awesome start of creation, and nobody understands how it happened. It is, it is incomprehensible to the scientists and the mythical people and the spiritual people, but I think one thing we can definitely recognize, it was awesomely intelligent. Awesome. And the idea that it was totally accidental as I said to some physicists who told me it was accidental, I said, you have a lot of faith in accident. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> if you can imagine the absolute perfect, the way it was designed, accidentally. And you know what they do to try to prove it's an accident? They try to say, well, there were so many billions of universes that by accident, one made it. Well. That's, that's their effort right there. <laughs> so let's just take a very fast week we went for universe, Earth. Let's look at Earth. What was Earth? It was a rock. Now it's hard to imagine about 3.5 billion years ago, this was a rock of Earth, a magnificent achievement, but completely without life. What happened? <laughs> really, I'm glad somebody laughed. <laughs> you almost have to have a nervous laugh because whatever happened then is happening now. That's the big thing. What happened was DNA. <laughs> DNA that we've had so far. <laughs> clever, clever, clever little DNA. So brilliant our engineers don't know how to form it. And what did DNA do Paka, appearing on this rock? Genetic engineering. <laughs> And as Brian Swim said, no hands, no manual. So just absorbing the intelligence that seems to have direction and purpose without any instructions to be seen. So the DNA, the genetic engineering, all the various forms of life, eventually the, the geosphere, the biosphere, the early creatures, 
to see that incredible procession of that arose from animal to human. And what you see is obvious, that through this enormous story of impulse of creation, that impulse does not stop with its arriving right now and giving birth to something new. If just as an image for this, if you were a bulb and you were being planted in the winter in New England down in the dark soil of earth, and for all that winter, you stayed under the soil until the sun came out and you began to send that bulb up there, green shoots, and there were little green shoots show, showing through the snow when suddenly daffodils. Everywhere, daffodils, completely invisible from the bulb. We learn to expect the unexpected and anticipate the new. <laughs> Nobody could have expected this. Now, if that happened, can you imagine what might be happening now? So you have to have a huge imagination to even begin to imagine the radically new that might be coming. But once you realize that it couldn't stop here, then you open your imagination. And now here is a revelation that came from Teilhard de Chardin. The revelation is that there is a plot to the story. There is a storyline. And it appears that the universe is going somewhere. And I'll tell you what the main plot in the storyline of universal evolution are. It's three things, all the way through from single cell to us. Number one, expanded consciousness. Single cell to multi-cell to animal to human. Universe is tending toward greater consciousness. How? Through more complex order by bringing particles together. By what? By attraction. And it has been said that the universe is a love story. Particle to particle, all the way on up by allurement, by attraction, by a form of love. That consciousness became so attractive that these cells were joining together more and more complexity. And as they did, they had greater freedom to choose, to fail, to express, to create, to destroy. And let's just look at those three elements first, place them in our own heart. Are we interested in expanded consciousness? Yes. Okay. Guess what the force is with you then? <laughs> Are we interested in more love, more creativity, and more connectivity? Yes. Well, then, the universe is with you. <laughs> and how about freedom? Yes. yes! Well, this is a very good revelation of the purpose of evolution. It, and it, when you see what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, now this is another thing to notice very serious. There were five mass extinctions before we got here. Billions and billions of species have been extincted. Now, let's even realize that out of every one of these extinctions, there has arisen more consciousness more freedom, and more complex order. So it appears that crises precede transformation, and problems of extinction are evolutionary drivers. That up till now, no matter how many billions and billions of species 
are extinct, more and more consciousness, freedom, and order has arisen out of all those jumps. So without analyzing it overly except evolution is a tremendous challenge as to how it works. It's good, but it's not nice. You cannot protect all those species. They're gone. But here is what we can do. Where do we find ourselves? We are right now at the threshold of the sixth mass extinction. Yes? The five that came before us, we have developed a system where we are outgrowing the womb of Earth. We're overpopulating, polluting, destroying. We didn't know. When I graduated from college in 1951, they said, Barbara, have as many babies as possible and get out there and win. It was a completely different culture. That was just 1951. My life is an arc of the transformation of history from 1929 to 2017. So the, the sixth mass extinction is right where we are now, and we're learning something that this has been my real exploration in life. We're learning conscious evolution. We're learning evolution by choice, not chance. We're affecting our own evolution by everything we do. The babies we have, the food we eat, the cars we drive, the wars we fight, the thoughts we have. So, so this species that we are, based on all that has come before us and the struggle of all life forms before us, are the first life form ever to have a choice of conscious evolution or devolution and extinction. Now, I interpret this that the source of creation, the process of evolution, the way God works, is that the purpose of evolution is to create co-creators. The reason for the freedom the reason for the possibility of self-destruction is choice. Now, if I were the creator of the universe, I would want co-creators, not robots. So we actually are facing a situation given to us by the divine process of creation with its enormous intelligence, with the ability to destroy or create, and the choice. So the question is, how are we going to make this choice? It feels to me it has to come from inside us. We do not have a dictator God. We do not have a controlling creator that is made all of us follow what that creator is telling us. But what the creator has offered us is the internal impulse of creativity. Yes? The impulse desire for more consciousness, for more freedom, for a more complex order. In other words, we've been patterned with something that is in every one of us that in my understanding, and this is where we're going to join together, that it is actually our generation and even here at Arise Music and at the Dome right now would be among the people on this planet most capable of making the choices to arise. Yeah. I mean, isn't that amazing? But would there be a better group? <laughs> I mean, are they sitting somewhere else <laughs> that you would like to ask them? <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's us. It's pretty well us. <laughs> Sure, and then everybody else who's so choosy. So then I could ask, um, we could ask everybody why you think you're here. Well, I'll ask, I'll ask myself, Barbara, why are you here? What am I doing? Uh, I mean, an 88-year-old woman who 
has been told, I mean, people say sometimes, Barbara, do you feel you're getting younger? And I say, no, I think I'm getting newer. <laughs> I think I'm getting newer every day. Why? Because the world is getting newer. And everybody who is saying yes to their own part in what they want to create in a world that is evolving towards radical newness that we've never seen before, and we're not going into the sixth mass extinction, then folks, what are we going toward? We have to have visions of where we're going, or we cannot move there because it's a choice. You see? So here is my offering. I believe that we are becoming a new species. And I'm calling the new species Homo Universalis. And I must say, last night, when I, when I did this, the one thing everyone cheered about was Homo Universalis. And how come? What was it about that phrase Anybody want to just shout out something? Why did you like that? Homo Universalis. What did you think when I said that? It touches each of us. It what? It touches each of us. It touches each of us. What else? Hope. Hope. Yes. Everyone's invited. We belong. Everybody's invited. Oh, great. Homo Universalis. Okay, here is why I think it really has the credentials of a new species. Let's First of all, look at our spirituality, our consciousness. How many of you feel your spirituality and your consciousness is arising toward greater, greater expansion? There we are. Okay. It's right there. The next one is creativity, vocation, social initiatives. How many of you feel some more creativity to express yourself arising. Look at this audience. I mean, really, this is phenomenal. See, we have to say how very precious this is. And now let's add to it the, the part that we often do not consider the high-tech genius of humanity. Let's add nanotechnology, biotechnology, quantum computing, computing, artificial intelligence, space travel. When you hold your cell phone in the palm of your hand, you have a global brain right there. When you're on internet, you're traveling like a hologram with the speed of light. What's actually happened to our species is we have been given powers of our ancient gods. Blow up world, build worlds. Change bodies, evolve bodies. Create more intelligence, create new entities, create new life forms, godlike power. Now many of us shy away, but then what are we doing? We're just turning it over to the wrong ones. What if we should turn our attention toward that power and see that it is here for the very same direction of evolution itself? Greater consciousness, greater freedom, more complex order, we can heal the earth, we can free ourselves from deficiency needs, we can explore the cosmos beyond, and we can open up the vast resources of inner space. Our generation is right there at that cost, because it's not going to go on for thousands of years in this holding position, you see? So not only are we lucky to be in this room, but we're lucky to be alive <laughs> right, right now. Okay, so if this is true, and we are gaining the powers, and we are becoming a new species, like Homo sapiens was new from Neanderthal, and so on. So, what do we do about that? <laughs> Nobody's been ever even knew we had to do something about it. But, <laughs> but you do. <laughs> that's, the, that's the truth. That's why I'm here to announce the news species. <laughs> the internet is our nervous system. 
It is our mass media, and it has been shared by, by many people, including Jose Argue Arguez, who was such a student of the Mayan culture, that when enough of us place our interest and attention of love, creativity, wholeness, and oneness in our mass media, our mass nervous system is going to turn on. And we're going to be like a newborn planetary system whose intelligence collectively can be revealed. And one of our goals as this new species is to place our intentions in our internet until we can begin to see the evolutionary components in health, education, economics, science and, science and technology, and realize we're already an emerging humanity. Yes? yes? We're already here. We have one more degree of connectivity and communication for this to happen. So I'd like to take a moment here just to have those of you who will imagine you're right in this predicament where evolution or devolution, humanity arise. I'd like one or two people to stand and actually say humanity arise. Tell us the noosphere. We have this recorded. There's live stream going on here. What's arising?